Welcome to Social Videos, my name is Joan and today I'm showing you guys how to make your girlfriend or boyfriend or partner on Valentine's Day extremely happy. I'm going to be sharing with you guys some Valentine's Day gift ideas along with some tutorials of gifts that I made for my significant other as well. They're going to be a bit more faster paced than my usual DIYs, but I specifically chose things that I think are on the more simpler slash doable side and hopefully don't take too too long either. I'll be having timestamps down below for each of the gift ideas slash tutorials. So if you're looking for a very specific one or you just want to browse through which ones I'm going to talk about, you can find it down below. And let me know if you get stuck or if you have any questions whatsoever and I'll try my best to reply as soon as I can. And if you don't have a partner you're making this for on Valentine's Day and you're just here for the DIYs, that is totally okay. These are wonderful gifts for literally anyone. And honestly, why not make some for yourself as well? They're really cute. Okay, let's get started with my first batch of gift ideas. The first one being matching items. I feel like this is a classic couple staple. Either matching clothes, matching souvenirs, matching whatever you want. And I'm personally not a fan of like really big blatant matching things like full on outfits or anything. They're cute, I just personally wouldn't do it. So instead I'm gonna be making matching keychains. I've actually done a thorough tutorial on how to make plastic shrink keychains. I'll be putting the link down in the description below and also up top for you to just check it out. And I really like this DIY because you can be really creative about it. I made kind of two matching sets. One was a milk tea boba, matcha boba kind of matching pair. And another one was a puzzle piece duo, which I'm very, very proud of because the pieces actually match together. I had to literally make that three times because the first two I just messed up because I forgot like an important step. So make sure to follow the tutorial as thoroughly as you can. But thankfully my third try was worth it because the puzzle pieces actually fit together, which was the goal in the first place. Look! <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Whoa. I'm actually so happy. I feel like the DIY is low commitment, really easy to do as long as you have the materials and it's super quick. You don't have to be extra artsy, even making like stick figures I feel like would just be a cute thing to do in general. And you can literally draw whatever you want and turn it into a keychain, which is kind of amazing. Very customizable, which I feel like is also a good Valentine's Day gift thing to consider. And a good thing about shrinky dinks, you don't have to keep them as keychains, you can also make them as like charms for bracelets or earrings. Very flexible DIY. Another idea for a low key matching item is not necessarily a shrinky dink keychain, but a yarn fluffy keychain. I'm not gonna get into the details of that because that's actually gonna be in my next upcoming Valentine's Day video. <laughs> yeah, matching items, very iconic. For the next group of ideas, it falls under a specific Valentine's Day staple, giving flowers. Now you can be basic and get, you know, a bouquet of nice flowers that might last like a week, maybe two weeks. Or you can hop on the fun trend that I think is really big on TikTok right now of making paper flowers. And let me tell you, paper flowers are so cute. Like tell me these do not look amazing. And they're also not gonna wilt or die. I feel like paper flowers is the right amount of putting hard work, effort, time, and joining it with a classic Valentine's Day thing to give. It's got the sentimental value and the traditional cute romantic gesture. There's quite a lot of tutorials out on TikTok and YouTube. I specifically followed one method that I wanted to try and I think it turned out really well. I specifically wanted to make roses. So I chose a method and then basically figured it out myself, but I have my tutorial to show you guys here. So for our materials, we're gonna need cardstock paper for the flowers. You can use either dowel straws or pipe cleaners for the stems. And you also need some cutting tools. And last but not least, a hot glue gun. And I just want to mention and dedicate to all the people who say that the tutorials seem really hard or they don't think that they'd be able to do it. The first time I tried this tutorial, I totally failed at it. So it's just a matter of practice and trying again. So taking cardstock paper, we're gonna measure around 16 centimeters by 16 centimeters square and cut that out. And then we're gonna round off the corners and basically make kind of a circular shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. And starting from one of the edges, we're gonna cut in a spiral, leaving a width of about two centimeters. And once you've reached the middle, we're then gonna go on the outer edge and make kind of a bumpy pattern. For each little bump, I did about two centimeters of length for the cut and then cut all the way around the outer edge and this just helps make the petal shapes. Now working from the outside in, we're gonna start curling up our spiraled piece of paper. You wanna try to start off with as tight curls as you can and then keep curling along the rest of the strip. Try to hold tight as you roll all the way until you get to the bottom piece and that bottom piece is just gonna wrap around the bottom of the flower to kind of make a base or a pocket. Now when you uncurl, you're gonna see that the flower is already taking shape, but still a bit floppy. So we're gonna take our hot glue gun and kind of glue the bottom of the flower down. 
and make sure that the middle and the surrounding is secure. And to make our flower more realistic, we're gonna take anything curved. Here I use a dowel, you could also use a pencil, and we're gonna curl outwards our petals. For this technique, I just put the cardstock between my rounded dowel and my fingers and then kind of did a peeling motion. This gives the flower a blooming rose effect. And that's basically how you make the flower part. Now, I wanted to make a bouquet of flowers of different colors, so I made other roses of varying sizes. If you want to change the size of the rose, just change the size of the square that you cut out, and then just continue with the steps that we just did. I'm not gonna lie, paper DIYs always make my workplace look extra messy, but thankfully the end product is worth it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still surprised by how well these turned out. They're super, super cute. The flowers themselves would be great as decor pieces, but I wanted to make actual flowers. So to make my stem, I took a straw, snipped off a piece on one of the ends and kind of opened it up. And the idea is that the flower is gonna sit in between these two tabs. So I'm gonna take my hot glue gun, put some glue on, and then just slap my flower right on there. Ideally, the flower just sits right where the tabs kind of open up. And just to make sure it doesn't fall off, I'm gonna glue around the tab and flowers, and then I'm gonna cover the stem with some green tissue paper. I'm gonna approximately measure how much I need, cut it off, and then roll it onto the stem, making sure I roll it tightly, and then I'm gonna take a glue stick just to glue the tissue paper on. And once you're done with that, you've basically made a paper DIY rose. because I'm extra, I decided to also make it into an actual wrapped bouquet. So I just took some plain white paper, some tape, wrapped it up in some string, just to make everything a little more cute and fancy. So those turned out, in my opinion, amazing. I was for real so shocked at how nicely they turned out. Also Loki, it kind of became a viral video on my TikTok. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead. You also get like an advanced look at some of the content I'll be putting out on YouTube. But yeah, I'm trying to use TikTok a lot more now. So follow if you're interested in seeing what I post on there too. Anyways, we're not done with the flowers. There's another way to kind of DIY them, which is making DIY ribbon roses. Now I actually already have a full video tutorial on how to make those. So again, link down in the description, up top in the corners. I will say though for ribbon roses, I think the time commitment slash work is like a bit more of a commitment. You might not necessarily have all the materials and the tutorial for making the ribbon roses is again, it's a whole own video. So it's definitely a lot more complicated to figure out than I think the paper ones are. Both are amazing. You can decide which one you want to do. Either way, your result will be super, super cute and romantic. Next up for Valentine's gift ideas is more on the kind of puzzle fidget side. Okay, I realize that sounds kind of confusing, but it's basically making a magic folding photo cube. If you've ever seen these things at gift store tourist shops, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's basically a foldable cube with photos all over it that you can kind of just fidget and play with and kind of display up as a bit of decor. This is a perfect item to give if you want to give your partner something that they can actually use and kind of play with. And the photos definitely add to the sentimental and sweet value. This DIY is definitely a little more high effort and a little more time involved, but I'd say the end result is really worth it and a very unique gift idea. So here's my tutorial on making a magic folding cube. For materials, we're starting off with some cardstock paper that ideally you can print on, cutting tools, some clear tape, and some glue. So we're first gonna need a pattern to make our cube. I'm just gonna use Canva, but you could also go on Google to look up a template. I just copied this one in Canva on my own and then printed it out on my cardstock paper. Now my cardstock paper has the cube template, so I'm just gonna cut them out and then fold them to make my cubes. We're gonna need eight cubes, so make sure you cut out eight pieces and make sure the lines you cut are straight so our cubes actually line up when we need to tape and put them together. Now with our templates, we're just gonna fold along each of the lines and make sure your folds and creases are nice and straight. That way our cube is actually a cube and not a misshapen cube. And you'll see that once they're all folded, you're able to kind of shape them into the cube that we're looking for. Now I'm gonna take some clear tape and then start taping it all together. So make sure your pieces aren't too long like I accidentally did here. You can just snip it off if you accidentally do it like that. And we're just gonna tape each and every edge so that our cube is fully put together. To make it easier to start off with the shape, I took the loose ends and kind of just put tape on it first and then attached it to the edge it was supposed to be touching. And with that, you made a cube. And once again, you're just gonna repeat the same steps so that you have eight cubes in total. 
And now once you have all of your mini cubes comes the tougher part of actually taping them in a certain way so that they're able to fold. We're gonna start off by taking a pair of mini cubes and taping it across so that they're attached. And I'm gonna be using two strips of tape to make sure the edge is fully covered. And as you can see, that makes a kind of hinge motion at the edge that we taped. And the idea is that each place we tape, we wanna tape the other side of the same edge. That just makes sure our cube doesn't fall apart and it makes our hinge a bit more smoother. And next we're gonna stack on two other cubes and then kind of tape these sides together. So once again, I'm just gonna use two strips of tape to kind of cover up the edge. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And as you can see, it now hinges outwards and also inwards from the last taping job we did. And following the principle that I said before, we're gonna make sure that we tape the other side of the edge. So I'm just gonna open up my hinge and then put some tape on there as well. A mini test you can do to make sure you're not taping it wrong is that you should still be doing the same hinging motion after you do the second round of taping. And then we're gonna repeat the same steps with the rest of our remaining cubes. And so you should end up with two separate squares made up of four mini cubes that have the same hinging motions. And we're gonna put the two together side by side and fold them to face each other and then turn it one face towards us. Next, we're gonna take the two cubes that are side by side on the top and bottom rows together. And don't forget, we need to tape the other part of this edge. So we're just gonna open up the cube outwards and then flip it over to then again, tape the part that actually is hinging the kind of sandwich motion we're doing. And with that, you should be done making the folding cube. And next, I'm gonna add the photos onto the cube. So going back to canvas, I'm gonna use the same size of squares and put my photos so that they spread over four squares. I'm gonna then print it out and then cut it into quarters. And each of these quarters are gonna go on the sides of the mini cubes that make up one whole face of the big folding cube. And not gonna lie, figuring out where the photos were gonna go was a bit interesting, but I marked off each face and then just folded the cube to see which places I wanted the photos to be in. You're gonna need 10 photos to fill up the spaces on the cube. And I'm just gonna take my glue stick to glue on the pieces of the picture onto the cube. Now for this, it's really important that you kind of orient the picture properly so that everything is lined up. Otherwise it does look a little bit funny. And it's important to make sure you glue down the edges of the paper just to make sure that the pieces actually stay on and it gives it a cleaner look. So I'm just gonna keep unfolding the cube, finding out where there's a face that needs to be covered and then adding photos accordingly. A bit of a tip as well I realized after I finished filming is that you probably wanna choose photos that aren't too close to your face. Otherwise it's a bit hard to kind of line everything up and make sure it doesn't look goofy. But yeah, as you can see, I'm adding the photos as I begin to unfold the cube. And don't forget about the outside of the cube as well where I also am going to add photos. And then I'm actually gonna fold the cube the opposite way of what I was doing before to make sure I didn't miss any spaces. And with that, you're done your magic folding photo cube. This is a super cute memento gift that you can put any pictures on so it's really personable. And it's kind of like a fun fidget toy for the person you're giving it to. So a win on both sides. All right, next up, we're going back to TikTok trends, specifically with paper. And for this kind of theme, it's more so like words of affirmation. I think it's a classic Valentine's Day gift idea to kind of write down stuff about your partner, maybe little words of encouragement or what you like about them. And kind of just write them in little slips and like put them in a jar. This is basically another version of that, but a lot more high effort, but a lot cuter in my opinion. And it's basically making paper candy notes. So I've seen these all over TikTok that I just had to try them. I genuinely hesitated for so long because I thought that it looked way too hard. This was probably one of the quickest DIYs I did in this whole video. And the turnout was so cute and it's such a unique idea. Because who doesn't love candy and notes? 
they're both sweet in their own way. Oh gosh. So these are definitely a unique twist in giving your partner some words of affirmation, of encouragement, of love. It's very sentimental and sweet when they realize how much work you put into making individual little candies of sweet little notes. So this is my tutorial on how to make paper candy notes. For our candies, we're gonna need some construction paper, some white glue or a glue stick, and then you're also gonna need some scissors, a ruler stick, and some markers or pencil crayons to decorate your candies. So taking our construction paper, we're gonna then measure out a five centimeter by six centimeter rectangle, but the six centimeters feel free to change. I'm doing six because three centimeters will be how wide my candy is. As you can see, after we cut out the rectangle, the idea is that we're gonna fold the rectangle together to make our candy wrapper. Next up, we're gonna make the design of our wrapper. So again, thinking about the fact that the wrapper will be folded in half, I'm gonna start on one half and feel free to design whatever you want. Just make sure that you're able to replicate it again on the other side of the rectangle. We're then gonna be putting glue on the undrawn edges of the rectangle to glue our wrapper together. So I'm just gonna take my white glue, put a thin layer just on the outer edge and then make sure that that stays together. I'm gonna hold it down as it dries. Make sure you don't fully seal the wrapper together as we still need to put our little notes in. And you also wanna make sure to keep in mind to line up the sides of the wrapper so that it actually glues together in a nice uniform fashion. Once that is dry, you'll see that we have the two edges sealed and then a bit of a pocket on one end, which was where we're gonna put our love notes in. But before I get to the notes, I'm gonna make a few more wrappers of different colors and different designs following the steps that we just did earlier. Once I'm done making all my wrappers, I'm gonna get started on writing my notes. And I'm just gonna cut out the tiny little strips, fold them up so that they can fit into the candy wrappers and just tuck them in. I'm then gonna take my white glue and then seal up the last remaining edge. And I'm gonna make sure to be careful to only glue the edge and not the actual paper note itself that's on the inside. And to give the candy a more realistic look, I'm gonna kind of squeeze it to make it a bit more 3D and then add in the little edges by cutting mini triangles so that it's got a spiky edge that's usually found on candy wrappers. And with that, you're basically done your candy love notes. And just to add a bit more cuteness, I'm gonna add it to a Valentine's Day baggie and then add a label on it because why not go all out an extra for your loved one? At least we come to a classic on I feel like these Sojo channels, and that's making Spotify glass art slash glass painting. So this is one of the ones I actually have a full video tutorial on as well, and of course link in description and link in the corner as well. This gift is like one of the most high polished, high quality gifts I feel like you give someone, but still be able to DIY it yourself. It is a great way to kind of commemorate a kind of song that you guys love together or if there's like a specific song that's your song. I feel like they look really intimidating to make but in reality they're really easy. There's just a bit more planning involved and also materials you do probably have to buy slash get. But all in all, I think it's pretty worth it and a really high quality gift. The difference I did make for this glass art than the one I did in my previous video, instead of painting the song slash album cover, I actually just printed it out and taped it. I didn't use the actual song cover I used a like personalized picture which again adds the sentimental value and makes your gift very unique and special it's also really cool because there's a working Spotify code on it so you can literally scan it and listen to the song when they see the painting I say watch the full on video tutorial if you want a more thorough step-by-step -step guide but I'll just quickly go over kind of what I changed slash how I did it and how easy it is to actually make it so here are all the materials I need. I'm gonna take my glass out of the glass frame and take note of the size to move to canvas to make my template. I googled an image of the Spotify play kind of buttons and got the link to the song I wanted to put on Spotify codes and then making sure I print out the flipped version of the template. You can also add text if that's what you wanna do. And I'm also gonna print out the image I want for the song cover. 
And then I'm gonna be following the basic steps of making a glass art painting. Again, if you don't know what those are, I'd highly recommend going to watch my actual thorough full tutorial on how to make these. I'm just gonna take my oil-based white paint pen and then draw over my template onto the glass. Once I've put on all my coats and cleaned up my lines, I'm gonna have my nice Spotify template. And then the change is, is that I'm not gonna paint my picture, but instead I'm just gonna tape on my printed picture and attach it with some clear scotch tape, making sure that the part of the tape that actually sticks onto the glass is just a tiny, tiny sliver, which just adds the illusion that the picture is just on the glass itself. And since only a small part of the tape is actually touching the glass, make sure that you rub it in so that the picture doesn't fall off. But yeah, that's basically it. And you should have a end result of your Spotify glass painting. All in all, Valentine's Day is a day of love. Whatever that may mean to you, whether you're single or dating, technically a homework holiday anyways. But either way, I hope you guys enjoy the ideas and tutorials. Hopefully your partner or yourself is able to enjoy them. And don't forget to tell your loved ones that you love them. And singles, make sure to undownload Instagram that day because you do not want to be looking through those stories. That's it for this video, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!